Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 615 of the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. I'm host as always, as, uh, damn, what, where am I going with that one? I had some coffee before this. I'm a little jittery right now. I'm host as always, <laughs> I'm Tyler, and joining me, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? I'm very happy this is this time of the year for Summer Just Game Fest, because I'm feeling pretty good right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean as well as anything else, you know, the we come back from vacation, getting used to everything else, you know, and then like just doing a little bit of extra work here and there. Yeah. Kind of a bit tired, but at the same time I was able to play a little bit of the final shape. Haven't, uh, haven't gotten too deep into it yet. I did play a couple of hours and stuff. I've been mostly playing myself. I have been enjoying it so far. Mm -hmm. So that is a good thing. I did play a little bit more of like, say a thousand year door. Nice. I definitely, have i definitely i'm still like getting towards like uh, the chapter three i've actually made it into like the center of chapter three which involves like the whole glitzville stuff and everything rock hawk yep rock hawk yeah. then on top of that and stuff i was playing a little bit of pokemon red with the charmander challenge and stuff i'm at level 60 everything else is like everything else is going good so far I just got a couple gyms left but uh yeah other than that, though, I am doing pretty good. How about yourself, Tyler? I'm doing all right, you know, clanging and banging as always. A um, little weird we're recording on a Friday night instead of our normal Saturday night. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I'm doing all right. We just uh, got off work a, a few hours, well, more than a few hours. It's been, I guess it's like 11 o'clock here now. It's been like six, seven hours now since I've been off work, give or take. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, uh, it's been a good day. I've just started, and you, know, you just you talked about it was your first week back from vacation. Uh, yeah. I'm going on vacation now. So that's pretty great. Uh, definitely uh, look forward to that. So I'm, I am riding high and I'll, be, I'll continue to ride high until like probably like Thursday night. And then I'll just going to hit my, I'll crash <laughs> into like the, a gigantic depression uh, leading back to the weekend to go back to work. And that'll be very upsetting for me. Um, but yeah, like you said, uh, being back in the summer game fest, um, you know, it's not E3, but uh, it still like gives me a little bit of like that feeling of like it's E3 time, you know, like it, it, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's a solid replacement. Um, like nothing's going to replace that, uh, completely like that era where, um, like even like the early, like we've been doing this for 11 years now, all those E3s, I, I miss that era of just like, um, having like the EA play, uh, Xbox, Ubisoft, uh, PlayStation, yeah. Nintendo, like, it, like just watching all that, having the excitement of all these like fun things and like comparing it and then just like, also just like, I kind of miss like that kind of, I, I, we're just, we, we're not, we know, we don't, we don't get paid to do this. We do this cause we love it because it's fun. Um, but kind of that grind of like watching all this and then like instantly coming on here and talking about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and just doing all of those showcases. And like it, it's, it's can be exhausting. And like, I remember like, I always enjoy like taking up, taking like a few days off, um, during that week and just like watching them all. And then just, you know, cause like, I remember like one year trying to do all that and work and it was, I, I, it, it was, it was awful. So like, but I just, I, I love doing all I miss. I miss, I miss what it was. I think it's still pretty fun. Uh, you know, even though like, you know, yeah, we're not at summer game fest. We get to play all the games. We get to touch all the games, but um, yeah, it's still exciting. We still have like, we have a summer game uh, fest, like the kickoff show here. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the, talk about that today. Um, kind of, so general idea though, general plan right now is uh, barring any like life things that go on. Uh, the plan is a, uh, Obviously, we're recording this on Friday night. Normally, we record. If you're just mm -hmm. checking us out for this, um, for Summer Game Fest, you've seen us. Hey, thanks for checking us out. Please like, follow, subscribe, check us out. We're on, we're on everything, podcast services around the globe. Uh, we're on you know Twitter, Facebook, all that fun stuff. So if you can check it out, check us out. Uh, you list, subscribe to us on your favorite podcast services. Subscribe to us on all the podcast services. Uh, leave, some, leave us some reviews. Click some buttons. Download some shit for us. We really appreciate it. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you're checking us out for that, uh, normally Gables and I record this on Saturday night and it goes up Sunday morning, uh, because summer game fest and everything going on, we record this on Friday night. This will go up pretty much immediately. I, I, I don't know why I'm saying that cause you'll be listening to this. Uh, but anyways, this can go up as soon as possible. Uh, as soon as I can get it up, it'll be up. And then the plan is, um, barring any like life issues, anything like that. Gables and I will be live reacting to it on our YouTube channel. So if you're listening to this, the podcast version, uh, there'll be links down below and also on the YouTube version, but there are links down below to all, all the things that we're on. So click on that link to YouTube, uh, subscribe to us, uh, hit the little bell if you want to, you know, to get notifications when we go live or whatever, post a video. Um, and we'll be doing a live react to the Xbox showcase on Sunday morning. Uh, that is at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 12 uh, central. I am Gables is Pacific time. I am new. Yes. I am central time. So, um, 
check us uh, check us out for that as well. And then Gibbles, I the plan is Gibbles and I will come back on Sunday night, um, and we'll we'll be live on YouTube for that, kind of breaking down everything like that. We we're gonna separate it because uh, it's gonna be about a two hour show from what I understand that the Xbox One, um, and you know the, trying to do immediately do a react uh, breakdown everything after that. It's just a lot. You know we we do have uh, lives that we you know, like I said we do this for fun. This isn't our job. So, right. Uh, we'll come back later. Uh, that way, it's not taking up our entire Sunday like in the middle of the day. And then uh, the plan is as well, uh, barring any uh, issues, on Monday there is the Ubisoft uh, Forward. I can't remember. Uh, I have it written down in here. It is at uh, noon Pacific, 2 p.m. Central. Uh, the Ubisoft Forward on Monday. The plan is to do a live react to that one as well. And then we'll be back sometime Monday to then do another breakdown, everything like that, sometime later on Monday. Um, so check us all on that. We'll be, so we're going to be doing a lot of podcasts, uh, a lot of live reactions. There'll be a lot of content on our YouTube channel. On top of that, since I am on vacation, um, I promised my best friend, Justin, uh, who's on this podcast with us for several years, that I hmm. would um, be Mar- I would play Mario Galaxy to completion if they ever put it on something that wasn't the Wii because I hated the Wii so much. I hated playing the game. <laughs> as much I bought the Wii, I loved the Wii at first, and then I, got, I thought it was a gimmick. I got sick of it really fast. Uh, anyways, long story short, short here, um, 3D All-Stars came out a couple of years ago, three years ago now, probably at this point, uh, and I told him I'd play it, I just have not, I played like a little bit of it, I told him I'd get around, I'd get around to it, I'm on vacation, I did buy a uh, capture card here, I, I don't know what I did with the box, box zoom, uh, here, so if you're watching on YouTube, I got myself one of these uh, NZXT HD60, I got one on, I found one on sale, um, things are not cheap to get a good one. So I found that one on sale. Uh, I, I test with it a little bit. Oh, Gable's walking away here. Uh, but I test around with it a little bit um, earlier today. I just got it in the mail yesterday. So uh, the plan is that I will be going live on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, I, I don't don't know exact time, stuff like that. So hit, also, if you're checking us out, please hit the bell. Subscribe to us on YouTube. More reason to do so. I will be playing through Mario Galaxy. I don't know if I'm going to finish it this week. Like I said, I don't know how it's going to work out exactly with Gables and I doing the podcast and live reacts on Sunday and Monday. I don't know about that. I'm going to, I'm planning on doing it on Saturday night and then uh, maybe I'll try to get some in on, on Sunday and Monday if there's time. Uh, and then like I said, but I'll, I'll be doing it throughout the week as well. So keep a, keep an eye on that. If you're on Twitter or Facebook, uh, also keep an eye cause I'll be posting like uh, we're going live. I'm going live playing it on, on there as well. So uh, check us out on all that, please. Uh, like I said, like, follow, subscribe. Check us out. And then, uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of the plan this week. A lot going on. It's going to be a busy week here on the uh, Drunk Nerds uh, account. So uh, definitely, like I said, check out that YouTube channel, especially because there's going to be a lot more content on the YouTube channel. But the podcast, the breakdowns, all that stuff will be on the podcast service as well. So uh, those, will be, those will be on there later. And I'll get those up as soon as I can. As soon as the podcast is over, I'll edit them and I'll post them. And get them up as fast as I can on the podcast services. But if you want to watch them live and sooner, it'll be on the YouTube channel. So that's what's going on here, Gables. But without further ado, let's get into really kind of the main thing of the week here we have for us. Um, well, for the day, anyways, until Sunday. Uh, Summer Game Fest happened today. Um, got over a few hours ago. Um, I guess before we get into it, Gables, uh, before we break it down yeah. game by game here, overall uh, thoughts on the show. Okay, so the overall thoughts of the show in general, I mean, very much long-winded. It was kind of a mix between, okay, there was stuff that did interest me, and then there was a whole lot of it that just, nah, didn't hold my interest at all. Especially when it came to a lot of, like, the, uh, a lot of, like, the the, sh- <laughs> the freaking tactical shooters, yeah. or, like, the whole, like, updates and all the other stuff. Like, I have no interest in Valiant, I have no interest in, like, just squad-based shooters in general and stuff, but... I did have a bit of interest when it came to a couple different uh, a couple different things. I mean, obviously the fighting game stuff that was something that was right up my alley. The whole the whole reveal for the second year of Street Fighter Six DLC that was big because it introduced not just veteran fighters like say Bison making his return and like Elena making her return and stuff, which her I think her last initial appearance as Street Fighter was uh, as also like a DLC character. I think it's Street Fighter Four. But uh, the biggest news coming out from that announcement is the introduction of Terry Bogard and also my sure and I from King of Fighters. Well, slash Fatal Fury and stuff. It's basically the first time that uh, SNK characters have 
done a crossover into in like a mainline Street Fighter game. Whereas before that, there were like collaborations between Capcom and SNK for certain games. Let's say CVS is one of them. But uh, it has been an extremely long time since we've had these this type of like uh, like appearances from like certain characters and like these type of collaborations. But uh, yeah, it's it's absolutely a big deal for like a fighting game sense is because these two companies were once like bitter rivals to each other <laughs> way back in the 90s, the arcades and stuff. But um, other than that, though, I mean, there were some things there were some other things I did like about this as well. For example, I kind of like the unveil of. Uh, well, oh, oh God, the the new characters and stuff for the whole Mark of the like Mark of the Wolves, so the Cry of the Wolves, I think it is like Garo, Cry of the Wolves and stuff. Okay. The with uh, Jeanette, I think I want to say, oh God, I forgot the names of the characters already and stuff. But one of them is like a returning character from like um, the uh, Mark of the Wolves and stuff like that. With a, there's a couple of like new characters or some I'm seeing inside the trailer. But the game itself looks fairly nice. I mean, it's straight slated for an early 2025 release. It definitely is hitting that marks of stuff that I really am liking. The, the cel-shaded art style, the quick action, stuff like that. The It just looks like even more like awesome SNK fighting game stuff. But uh, yeah, the Sonic Cross Shadow Generation stuff. I did like the initial gameplay from how that's coming along and stuff. But uh, in regards to anything else, though, I mean... I kind of was drifting out here and there. I mean, if there was something that really caught my eye or something, I <laughs> I did kind of like watch a little bit of it. But uh, other than those announcements, I didn't really remember too much of anything else. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm of two minds of this one. Um, I think like as like Summer Game Fest of like um, if you're looking for the big, big hits, they weren't there. Um, no. and Jeff Keighley even himself even was kind of like earlier in the, uh, earlier in the week, uh, did a couple, like he'll, he'll do like some interview, he'll do some Q and A stuff on his YouTube channel. And he was talking about like, you know, like keep expectations in check. He named a bunch of games. Like people were asking him like Kingdom Hearts four, uh, you know, like the God of war or stuff like that. Like all these games, like, are these going to be here? And he's like, no, 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 no. Like obviously that the, like these like huge, like pie in the sky ones weren't there. Um, but like, I think, like, if you're expecting, like, which I understand, like, that's kind of the expectation for a lot of people is, like, most people there are there to watch. They want the big stuff. And that's most gamers, you know, like, most ga- like um, people, like, arguing about, like, Call of Duty being, at the being like, the big second thing at Xbox thing. is like, mm-hmm. well, Call of Duty is the biggest franchise in gaming. It just is, whether you like it or not. So, it's smarter than, from a business perspective, hey, tie Call of Duty into Xbox. Make, you know, show it there. More people will pay attention to it. And, hey you will do the little thing in your head like, oh, Xbox, Call of Duty, boom, here you go. Um, so I, I get um, I, I get it if you're a fan and they want the big stuff. Didn't have it. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, I think like, but if you were just someone like um, that's just down for some, like check out some new shit, find some interesting games, like like Gables and I have been talking for a long time now, especially after like the month of May, where it's just like, man, th- Indies are killing it this year. And if like, if you are someone mm-hmm. that is willing to like, try some new shit out um, and explore kind of what you think you might like for video games, like, man, there's a lot of games out there for you. I get like, Hey, if you're like someone that likes you, like you, you like the finals or Valorant or something like that. Like, Hey, there's a couple of cool updates in here. Uh, but if you are someone that like, yeah, if you are, you, you're here for like, I want to see the big first party stuff, the big third party stuff. Like it, it wasn't there really. Um, no. And I, I think, you know, I keep, I keep saying this, like every podcast feels like we're in an interesting time in the gaming industry. Um, but I was thinking about um, just going into this, like getting into this weekend here of like all the big third parties and all the big first parties. We know almost nothing about anything post like 2024. Uh, That's looking at, true. Look at Nintendo. We know nothing. We know like Metro Pie 4, which we got a we got a fucking logo seven years ago this mm-hmm. weekend. It's been seven years this weekend since we actually got a logo, and all we've gotten since then is hey, the game's been rebooted like five years later or five five years ago. Um, you look at like other than that, we're just kind of waiting for a switch too. That's all we that's all we have from them. Uh, then like well, and then on top of that, we have, what Luigi's Mansion th- two uh, later this month, and then we have the NES World Championship next month. Uh, that's it yep. from them. PlayStation's got a, a decent lineup, but it's, everything we know is this year. Like we have Concord, right. Astrobot, 
uh, Until Dawn, and then the uh, Lego Horizons, which we'll talk about later. Xbox. Xbox, to be fair, has a lot of, like, a lot of games announced, but it's because they announced a bunch of games like four years ago <laughs> and True. they have a pretty good, they have a pretty good year. It looks like if everything comes out and releases in the time period, they think, but then you look at EA outside of the sports games. We don't really know much from them. Uh, you look at Ubisoft no. uh, outside of like Assassin's Creed and star Wars. We don't know much from them. Uh, you look at um, square Enix. I don't off the top of my head. I know we have, we have like Dawn trail coming, I think later this month. Uh, but I can't think of anything major. That's like imminent. Like obviously, you know, like, uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake, the third part, it's coming uh, it's like years from now. But like something that's like mm-hmm. feels like it's a, it's in like the next twelve to eighteen months. I, I can't think of anything from them. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably missing. But like uh, the big third party stuff, but there's probably a couple co- big companies there I didn't mention. Uh, but we don't know much from anybody, and it's very interesting that like I feel like we would have got some a- answer, especially coming off like the state of play we had last week, where it was just kind of like, hey, here's a bunch of like games like first party wise that are like coming soon. And then there's nothing after that. So I don't know. I, it's just very interesting. I wonder if it's like, is it a changing of the guard? Cause we talked about like for, for a good three, four year stretch there where it was like, it felt like as soon as the game was like green light, green lit and like a boardroom, they announced it. And then we wouldn't hear from it for years. And then bam here, like finally we hear from it. And then like next year it's out. Uh, and now it's like, I wonder if like people like finally got burnt enough by that that like we just stopped doing that it's like hey like or it's been the people got tired of delays so like we'll stop announcing things so early uh that like we're gonna be like, tighter and also we'll save a lot of money on like uh like doing advertisements stuff like that on, like tv it's like hey we'll just make it kind of almost like what fall four did like a decade ago whereas like we announced it in june it was out in like Oct- uh november i think november october so i always feel like we're going to that you look even like nintendo like they don't announce stuff super far out anymore like most of their stuff is announced a few months out. Uh, you like they'll announce it at a direct, and within like six months, it's usually out. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Very very interesting time. Anyways, long, but like I think from that aspect, yeah, it was disappointing. I think as like, but someone like from like Gables and I, if you're someone that's like a freak, like listening to this podcast or like listen to like you listen to a lot of podcasts for gaming industry, like I feel like there's a lot of good shit in here that you might like. And there's a, you know, I uh, I can't remember who said. I think it was um. God, who was the the Vita guy that was always at PlayStation events, always harping the Vita? Uh, was it Geo, I think? Um, Possibly. Uh, yeah, but you know, he would always come out, and it was always like a gimmick. He'd come out, and like, this game is also coming to the Vita, and it was all hope of Vita. I remember him at like a PlayStation Expo a long time ago. <laughs> um, but like, I remember he did an interview, and he talked about like the the art of building like, um, you know, like a, a showcase, an E3 thing, whatever. And he said the, the goal is like, you're never going to go in, and like, they might show 30 things. And there's no way you're going to like all 30 things. But if you can find like three or four, then that's a win. And I feel like coming out of this, yeah, it was a very long show. It was like a two-hour show. Uh, but I, 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 can't, I think I came away from like there's like five or six things here that I didn't know about before that I'm super pumped to play. And like are they going to be like fucking game of the generation, maybe in our game of the year maybe even? No. But I feel like, man, there's a bunch of games here that are going to be really cool potential experiences here then I'm fucking down to clown. So without further ado, sorry for the long winded uh, discussion there. Gables, let's get into it here. Uh, Starting off with a big bang here, I thought, but maybe not big bang, big bang from in, in the scope of summer game fest, Lego rises adventures. Uh, this one leaked. We already knew about this. Uh, I talked to somebody earlier in the week. Basically there was going to be some like um, behind the scenes, like a uh, preview event for, uh, for people, it's for content creators, and uh, game journalists, stuff like that. And the, 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 hmm. the preview will be out sometime next week. Uh, but okay. yeah, so anyways, this kind of came out. So a lot of information, but we didn't know anything about like other, other than the fact that there was a Lego horizon game and it was called Lego horizon adventures. Uh, it's coming. Right. Um, shockingly, uh, the game is coming to PS five and PC, which did leak, but also this is, this part did not leak. It's coming to switch, which is insane. Um, it will oh, have, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it'll have co-op. Uh, it sounds like Gorilla games is maybe co-developing this it sounds like but i can't remember the name of the studio that is uh it's all yeah so it's coming to steam and epic game stores as well uh, it's coming sometime this holiday season um it almost looks more like it doesn't look like the normal like lego games that we see it's almost more no. like the lego movie like it was, it was like it was made in like the same like whatever engine they use to make the lego movies in that's what it looked like i right. i don't know i'm someone that loves horizon games like i am a, a I'll pound the table for like how much I love the rise and how great they think they are. And it just always sucks that whenever they put out 
the 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 uh, the games or even the DLC. They the, like the one of the biggest games of the year comes out the week late the week after. Like no matter what right. they do, everything they put it they put out like one these put out these great game this great expansion, and then a week later like the game of the year comes out. It's just without fail it happens to them. <laughs> um, they're four for four on that. So whatever whenever this comes out the week after that. That's when the game of year is coming out. We don't know what it could be. Maybe it's like a Garfield movie game. Who knows? But that'll probably be the game. That'll end up being the game of the year. Uh, it just has to by law. Um, but I, I found this like really, really cool. I, I've talked about, I have, I have a long history of like Lego games where like, I like those games quite a bit. It's just that my OCD brain cannot play them right. because I have to like break everything in the game and like get all the fucking bits, even though I don't care about the key. Connect, uh, collecting all the bits uh, but man i love the art style of it uh it looks like it is two-player co-op it'll be couch co-op and also online co-op no idea about crossplay. uh but i man i think the biggest thing honestly out of all this as great as i as i love the voice acting i love Ash, uh, ashley birch is back and she's like mm-hmm. like i think she's doing a really great job of like being this like you know a lego character instead of like you know you normally she plays games she's like in, in games she voice acts in so it's kind of like a more dramatic uh thing so it's kind of exciting to hear as like a more Kind of funny, whimsical kind of uh, Ashley Birch here, uh, but yeah, I was blown away by this trailer. Uh, but also, I think coming to Switch is the part that, like, holy shit, that that blew that blew my mind. What about you, Gibbles? Yeah, that's that's really interesting, though. I mean, like uh, the first time we're initially having a PlayStation franchise, like even if it's a spinoff, appear on the Nintendo system, like Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I mean, when I think about it. When it comes to anything like, say, Nintendo and Sony related and stuff, the last time I can remember like a quote unquote PlayStation or Sony inspired game coming on to like Nintendo system was way back in the Super Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it's it's that long ago. It's like at least over 30 years ago before they Nintendo and Sony went their separate ways because of the failed Nintendo deal between them. And then, like, Nintendo going to see Philips CDI and yeah. having that atrocity and stuff like that while well, Sony did their own thing, and which led to the creation of uh, the original PlayStation. Yeah. So worked it's, out, it's, it's, worked it's, out in the end. <laughs> what's hilarious about it is, like, 30 years later, now we're seeing Sony franchises appearing on Nintendo systems, yeah. like Horizon. I think that's really hilarious. Now, the game itself, the game itself, it looks it looks fine. It's a... It looks like a, like a standard kind of like Lego game that you would think, you know, but yet there are definitely some more whimsical aspects of it. And like, it's just kind of really interesting how Horizon as a series and stuff like that, they just had the sequel like a couple of years ago to the original Horizon and stuff. There's the rumored remaster stuff for the original. And then it's like, for this one, it's like a, it's like a spinoff Lego game. I mean, I'm, I understand it, it leaked and stuff, but uh, for me, I looked at it's like what the hell a Lego Horizon game? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like okay, yeah, okay. But yeah, the biggest news people are gonna say here is like, oh hell, it's coming on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I mean it does it does make sense. Like I think like if you're gonna put a game, if PlayStation is gonna cross the line and put a game on the Switch, this is like the this makes more sense than in, in any game they can put out. Like you know, Nintendo is more of the family kid friendly console and like that's then mm-hmm. that's part of their success is like they own the family and the kids the kid genre and mm-hmm. to make the to make a like what well, honestly it's a crazy mashup it sounded insane when it was announced seeing the gameplay is still insane to me but I, yeah like yeah. you have a franchise that is sold i think between the two cop the two games are out it's sold over 30 million units so it's a, it's one of their biggest uh, ips they own but it's it's a brilliant idea to put that on the switch and especially like I said, it's a it's it's a family friendly version of, of it to get people over. And on top of that, yeah, the, it's, there's been the rumors of the remake. There's a there's rumors of the, the multiplayer game. Obviously, you're gonna get the third one. And then on top of that, you're gonna have a TV show coming sometime I think next year. So um, makes sense. I get why they're doing it. So uh, I think I just it, I I guess I just wasn't expecting it. But uh, yeah, especially on top of that, going to PC day one as well. So very interesting. Uh, no Xbox though. Uh, next up here, uh, Quidditch, uh, Quidditch Champions. Uh, is launching uh, this year. It's coming September third. It's basically the uh, like almost like a. It it, didn't, it looks very double A. It doesn't look like a big budget yeah. uh, like game, but uh, it's basically the Quidditch game that was like remember, they made like a GameCube game of this a long time. I remember playing a long, long time ago. Um, but it's called Quidditch Champions. It is coming to everything uh, on September third. It is not a free to play game, uh, but I I did see I can't confirm it, but I did see someone post that it is coming to playstation plus on day one i don't know if what tier huh. that's in uh but we've seen in the past like foam stars come to uh, uh, come to ps plus 
on day one. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's a smart idea because obviously like these games, like um, I'm assuming it's going to have online and everything like that. So I having, you know, trying to get a big audience on day one is obviously the most important part of this game. But uh, I was kind of more surprised it wasn't free to play because I figured like this is a, you know, Harry Potter is a gigantic IP. You know, I feel like if you make it free to play, this is like a game I think a lot of people will want to play. Uh, make it free to play, and then I don't know, but I don't know. Maybe they're not trying to do live stores with this. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I don't know. Give us what were your thoughts on this one. I was actually surprised to see like anything kind of Harry Potter or something related to disappear in the show, but then not seeing it as a Quidditch game. I mean, that actually caught me by surprise right there. That's it's actually pretty interesting that they're going the realm of like a whimsical okay let's go back to like when harry potter was a kid him and his friends and stuff like that and then go and do like uh like a full-on like a full-on sports theme like game with harry potter and stuff but it's just quidditch mm. yeah that actually is going to be kind of interesting to see how well that does yeah yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm curious especially uh that that ps plus stuff is real and obviously if it's like if it's like on the base tier or the whatever tier uh I think that's smart. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we'll chat the wait and see on that one. I'm, I'm, I'm more curious, like, is the game as a service or is it just like a, it's like, this is the full game, which would be cool. Either way, it'd be pretty cool. Um, no Room in Hell 2 uh, is coming uh, this October, around Halloween, they said it's coming early access. This is that uh, eight player uh, zombie game. Looks like, I don't know, I think it was like kind of like a extraction shooter. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, th- I thought like graphically it looks fantastic. Uh, I love all that, but like, eh, I mean, it's just, I'm not early access guy. I'm going to wait till 1.0 kind of guy. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It looks, it looks pretty cool. It's just not something that's going to be something I'm going to be checking out. What about you, Gables? Yeah, I don't really care too much about it, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the game looks good. I just, yeah, I don't think it's going to be something. Especially, you know, like an eight-player co-op game. I don't think it's going to be for me. Um, next up here, uh, not too much. Star Wars, Star Wars Outlaws got a teaser. I wasn't not too surprised, too surprised about this. Ubisoft is usually pretty big on, like, showing a game at a different press conference before they put it at their press conference. So it makes sense. Hey, like, Hey, like here's a little teaser. Check us out. We're going to be doing our Ubisoft forward on Monday. We got like a 30 second little teaser for uh, star Wars outlaws. We'll get some more, uh, a little bit more. It looked like they're teasing Lando in there. If I, if I, I've only watched it once. I'm going to go back and watch it again. Uh, but I thought there was like a Lando tease in there. Um, yeah. We already know that game's coming on August 30th, but um, I'm assuming we're gonna have the big, huge, like breakout. Um, I think this will be like the big game of the show. Uh, at the Ubisoft mm-hmm. Forward. Uh, anything on that one, Gables? Um, only that I'm keeping my mind open about the game, and I'll just wait till the Ubisoft Forward and stuff like that in order to see more of it before I decide if I like or not like it. Yeah. <laughs> I, so far, like what they've shown, I'm liking. Uh, it's just I'm i It's just the Ubisoft uh, a vacation of what this game could be. Um, mm-hmm. it scares me because like I think there could be a really great game in here that's trapped in like a hundred hour game. So. Um, Moving on here, uh, this leaked earlier in the day um, <laughs> by uh, 2K themselves. Uh, so we're getting a Civilization 7. It's coming mm. in 2025. Uh, it's also coming to consoles on day one, uh, which I think is a huh. first. Normally, I think like I think we've had Civ games previously on consoles, but they usually come much later. So yeah, the fact that they're announcing that, and there's also going to be a uh, showcase in August for this game and that will show the gameplay, which is something we've seen a few times throughout this event. Is like, hey, here's like a, or a teaser for this game, kind of like the Star Wars Outlaw thing. Here's a teaser for this thing. We're going to have a showcase later in the summer. So um, that was interesting. But I'm not a Civ guy. I was kind of disappointed. Like they uh, they, they tease like a, uh, there was going to be like a big uh, a sequel to a 2K franchise or Take 2 franchise rather uh, at this event. And people were going crazy. Is it Mafia 4? Is it the new Bioshock game they announced like five fucking years ago? Like what is it? And it's Civ 7. So I don't know. I, 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 I can't wait. I know like Civ 7 has like it's probably like the like the most like guaranteed as a hit game that they can announce here but uh I don't know I think uh I think most people are more excited more excited for something else what about you I'm not really too much of a fan of Civilization as a franchise but at the same time though I mean I'm very surprised to see that we're going to get the seventh entry in the game itself I mean when the trailer did initially hit I had a chance to watch this and I'm thinking to myself and immediately it wasn't until halfway where I just went through the different ages and stuff. I'm like, Oh yeah, this is a civilization game. And it's like, yeah, just the sim, just all that stuff, you know, the hardcore fans of civilization, they really love checking out more of this stuff. It's just to me, I could not get into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And plus it was just like, 
a teaser. There was no gameplay, no nothing there. So it's hard to get excited for that stuff. Um, next up here, speaking of hard to get excited for, uh, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Um, that is coming to everything October 11th. Gables, go mm. ahead and talk about it. I don't give a shit. Gameplay looks pretty good. Looks pretty frantic. There's a lot of things happening all at once. Probably going to be causing some sort of seizure-inducing things for people that are not <laughs> that are not really much prone to a little bunch of the various like flashes and stuff like that. Which, no, well, I kid you not, guys. I mean, if if like uh, if you are sense like sensitive or something like that to like flashing lights like that, just just do not watch this trailer because I kid you not, it just feels like moment after moment of like different types of events inside the whole Dragon Ball franchise. But at the same time, you know, there's a bunch of like just there's a bunch of like just flashing images and stuff like that going here and there and stuff like that. I kind of gave me whiplash <laughs> personally. Yeah. But uh, Tenkaichi, this uh, this Dragon Ball Z like sparkling sparking zero and stuff like that. It looks like the gameplay is looks like it's going to be pretty solid. There's definitely some other aspects of it that uh, it looks like they haven't even delved into yet, though. But uh, it's definitely reminisce. They are definitely showing like all the important moments so far inside that Dragon Ball franchise, you know, like the battle between Goku and Frieza, the battle between like Vegeta and like Majin Buu and stuff like that. Then you have like some of the later things like from Dragon Ball Super, you see Ultra Instinct Goku. I think that was an introduction to the trailer and stuff. So it's, it's definitely, it's definitely hitting all the various points inside the Dragon Ball franchise, a story mode, but I'm glad that it's going to be coming out this year. I want to see more of the initial gameplay itself other than just oh, just away from the trailer and stuff just to see how an, a usual match or like a usual like event or something that's going to occur. Like say you're fighting against somebody and stuff like how is the battle going to go is it just all terrain stuff or like I'm just basically just wanted to know more of the ins and outs of the game itself before I personally decide. But I did really like what I saw. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to I just realize the article I was reading did not have everything in it, so that's pretty disappointing. So I am wow. so because I did notice it it skipped over um, metaphor re Fantasio Gables, um, mm-hmm. which um, I know is a game that you're excited for. That's Persona, that's the uh, Persona people. Yes. Um, I've talked to you before about this. I think I've talked about it on the podcast. I just admitted that like I, I like, Persona games, I'm just out on. I, it's just the franchise is not gonna happen for me. But this, Gables, this is doing it for me. Oh, yeah. What about you? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> the different type of job classes and stuff makes, like, certain characters, like, transform, like, into their initial job classes, which is kind of interesting to some aspect and stuff. I mean, the gameplay of itself looks quite unique. There are elements of Persona, obviously, that are inside here. I mean, a lot of the different... A lot of the different like uh, creatures, some you can eventually like evolve into and stuff. Kind of remind me more similar to like the personas you collect throughout your journey and stuff. The whole yeah. job class stuff and this and that. I mean, art art wise looks fantastic. I mean, I did like the way the game looked. Like uh, the characters seem interesting and stuff, but yeah, psh, just gonna be waiting until this game comes out though. I'm really curious to see those review scores. Yeah, it's also coming out October 11th, so Gables are going to have to decide mm. between Dragon Ball and Metaphor Be Fantasio. But, oh, um, I didn't even think about that. Jeez. Yeah, so I, feel, I think, like, so far there's not a lot coming out in the fall that's, like, you know, singing to me. So I think if, if October is pretty is pretty empty, Gables, I might be becoming a Metaphor Be Fantasio fanboy. So um, <laughs> uh, be, be, uh, be aware you have to deal with that. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to backtrack here. I found an article here uh, that actually has everything. It's very annoying when, like, you find articles that says everything announced at Summer Game Fest, and you go through it, and you're like, wait, you skipped a bunch of shit. And then I saw the scroll through like eight different articles that said the same, had the same goddamn title, but then skipped over random shit. Next, um, go, I'm going to backtrack a little bit here. I forgot about this game. This game looked awesome. Uh, it's called Cuff Bust. Uh, this is yes. the guy that made the Choo Choo Charlie. So this is like a, like almost like you're like these like little like bear like alien things, and you're yep. like, you're breaking out of prison. I think it's up to 20 players. It's coming out. It says, uh, he did say 2025, maybe in the fucking trailer. Uh, but this game looks absolutely wild and like a ton of fucking fun. Uh, what about you, Gables? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. The whole like, uh, alien looking bears and stuff like that, trying to escape out of the freaking 
prison and stuff, like distracting guards and like freaking just beating the shit out of the guards while other players are just going yes. through going to helicopters. And then you can like fuck each other over, like stab each other in the back. Like they showed like people taking off with the helicopter and leaving people behind, like blowing up the helicopter. And like, yeah, this game looks like a, who knows, like, <laughs> who knows, like the, the longevity of this game. But like, man, like if like they step to 20 people, if like a handful of us can just get together and play this game. One night, I think this could be uh, just a total awesome game session. Oh, my God. Could you just imagine this, the scene or something like that? We're all just playing this game, and all of a sudden, it's like you leave, you like leave either like like a couple players behind or something like that, and you guys, oh, yeah, red, 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 just shot them down. No! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I played, I played Hell Divers with, with some buddies, with the four, but there's four of us, and we fuck each other over. I can't imagine what's going to happen with 20 of us, so that'd be really interesting. So, um, some more stuff here that I kind of got missed, and I initially apologize for that. Um, this is maybe my game of the fucking show, Gables, right here. Right. Never. Okay. Um, this is from the, oh. the creators of Gris. Um, this is what we call a Tyler Ass Tyler game. You're talking about beautiful art style, 2D side scroller, but like with some awesome. So I I love the style and the visuals and everything of, and the music of Gris. That game just did not click for me. I don't know what it was. It's just like that was like my, that was like you would have thought my fucking game and i bought it day one played it played a couple hours of it just did not uh stick with me which is funny enough like i have a couple friends that like this is like a game that i would think they wouldn't give a shit about and they loved it so it's very weird to me how that worked out but anyways uh this this game looks fantastic it actually like surprisingly ended up being more of a combat focused like platformer game uh and then also on top of that you have a you have a dog you get him as a puppy and he grows with you uh and like he like gets bigger and bigger as the game goes along but like the game the, the action the combat everything that looks fantastic holy shit the art style no surprise looks great but gables if one bad thing happens to that fucking dog i'd be so fucking pissed <laughs> nothing better happen to that fucking dog that dog better be goddamn fine i will take every single bullet stab wound i have to take to make sure that dog makes it to the end of the game what about you gables <laughs> Yeah, the game definitely did look unique. Neva did have a great art style. It definitely did have some solid gameplay stuff. I mean, it kind of gave me vibes of like, oh god, what's another game that it kind of gave me kind of some of the vibes of like, say a uh, Hyperlight Drifter a little bit because of oh. some aspects of it, you know. Sing you know, it to yeah. my heart here, Gables. Well, some of the fast-paced action of it kind of remind me of some of that game though. But the art style of itself, it's unique and stuff. It kind of reminded me a little bit of. Uh, well, obviously, their last previous were Grizz and how awesome that game initially looked. So, who knows, man? I mean, this could be possibly one of your favorite games of the year, if not year, the game of the year. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, it's scheduled this year, but it's an indie game, so I'm going to say I'm going to play that game in, like, 2026. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold the help. It immediately, like, I was going on to, like, on Steam and adding games to my wish list as I was going, and that was, like, one immediately <laughs> wish list. Um, next up here, Black Myth Wukong. We just got like a weird. It's we, we've got so much gameplay from this game. It got it got announced so long ago that we yep. we just now got like the CGI trailer. So I feel like they're doing it backwards. <laughs> so it's very weird. I was like, okay, cool. I'm down for some more gameplay because this game looks fantastic. It's a game I'll never yes. play because it's not a me game. But I think I it's a game I'm gonna love watch other people play and pe- people talk about. Uh, but we've already known the date, August twentieth. Kind of the big thing here oh. was like it's kind of an advertisement. Hey, I'll put now. There's like a. There's gonna be a um, like a collector edition pre-order thing. What's weird though is that it's coming to everything. It's coming to PC and PlayStation on August 20th. Mm-hmm. The Xbox version has is not coming out that day. I'm assuming it's like it sounds like it's a Series S X thing here, but that's oh. um, that's kind of the information I've seen so far. But I know Gables, you've been very pumped about this game. Oh, absolutely! Black Myth Wukong looks like I've been excited about this game initially since it's been revealed and stuff. I mean, that's one of the games I put like bet on for like the fantasy critics stuff, and uh, I kind of feel like it's interesting that there are so many interesting games coming out right before that initial release date later on in August and stuff. I mean, I have the Urge Tree stuff that's going to be literally, I think, either next week or something like that for yeah. Elden Ring, and then like you have Metaphor that's in August, and then like. Now that one's going to be coming like about a week or two later after that, you know, it's like Black Myth Wukong. I really am well, excited yeah. to see how August, that game. It's August 20th, so you got a couple month gap between that stuff, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, Her- I have a couple months gap and stuff, but uh, it all Her- depends on 
her her, well, her anyway. tree though is thirty to fifty hours. So uh, <laughs> possibly. Yeah, that's what the <laughs> report people. Uh, that's kind of stuff I've been hearing from uh, some people that review review copies are out there. So that's kind of what yeah. I've been hearing. Um, next up here, Batman Arkham Shadow. This is the uh, VR game. Um, it was. <laughs> I feel kind of bad for this game in a lot of ways because, like, I know it's it's VR, but like, you can hear the the crowd audibly go, oh, like, when they when they like they got excited when they heard Arkham Shadow, but then they got they like audibly like, you can hear the crowd just like be disappointed when a they announced VR it's, game. it's a VR game. So uh, it was weird they just did a CGI trailer for this, even though they did it like they announced it like a few weeks ago as a CGI trailer, and then they announced that there was gonna be full gameplay in August. I'm assuming Gamescom. But very weird. Like, why would you? I mean, why would you? Why? Why? Why do it twice? I don't know. It's very weird. Yeah, it definitely was fairly weird. I mean, <laughs> this thing has the unfortunate thing of coming out and being announced right after like the whole failure of Suicide Squad. But uh, have it being like a VR game in of itself. I mean, at this point in time, you know, it's like there are some VR games that are definitely that definitely have been like hits this past year and stuff like that. But uh, I think people are just absolutely just burnt out of anything like Batman related now. <laughs> yeah. I think it's more so the VR stuff. I think people would like, if they put out like an actual Arkham game right now, I think we'd mm-hmm. be excited for it. I just, I think honestly, right. we're six, we, we'd be excited for like a DC, a great DC game. Uh, I think it's just like, yeah, post suicide squad. Uh, and now here we are with VR. Um, and VR is just kind of, yeah, like it's, it's the story of VR. It feels like it's going nowhere. So uh, I think that's really more so what did it. Um, next up here, Gables, I'm going to go to the bathroom, but Street Fighter Six, we mm-hmm. have all the details here. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, Fatal Fury's uh, Terry Bogard is coming, uh, as long with uh, Maya Shirinua is coming as well. So um, Gables, talk about that. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go to, the, to the bathroom real fast. I'll be right back. Okay, so initially the release... They let's see. Capcom did like a little reveal trailer here. I mean, the beginning portion of this trailer, you have somebody walking into frame and stuff like that, while both uh, Jamie and I think like uh, another fighter and stuff like that were playing like an arcade game and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, it's like you have Terry Bogart in the fray, and then it, it just kind of confused a lot of us at first and stuff because it's like, okay, this is like another, is this like a new Fatal Fury game? Is this like some sort of another crossover game and stuff? And then all of a sudden you see this font and stuff of Street Fighter VI just pop up and stuff for Terry's name, that with my show and I and stuff. And on top of that, seeing like other character reveals of like Elena and also the returning Bison and stuff like that. This absolutely kind of blew my mind because it's like we had a full reveal of the entirety of year two for Street Fighter VI. Year one concluded with the release of Akuma not even like a few weeks ago. And uh, a lot of players have been enjoying the hell of just playing as Akuma and stuff and his redesign stuff and it's like his different moves and everything and stuff. But it's substantial to have like the king of fighter characters crossing over to street fighter and stuff because this is really like the first time we've ever actually had king of fighter characters represented inside like guest characters inside of a street fighter game i mean street fighter is not really known that uh the mainline street fighter games i should say are not really known for having like guest fighters in there i mean tekken has done guest characters in the past i mean soul calibers and de- like guest characters and stuff like that but uh yeah just just the thought, you know, to where it's like SNK and Capcom are working together again in terms of like having some of their fighters like come into like some of the mainline series and stuff. With that, I was actually fully expecting maybe like a Street Fighter character or something popping into like uh, the new Garo game or something like that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the reveals, it was just character reveal trailers and stuff. Just the magnitude of that. There was no actual gameplay, although they did do an initial release of when some of these characters are coming out. So the ones that are coming out the soonest is going to be Bison, the whole redesign of Bison and stuff. His gameplay trailer drops tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. my time. So, yeah, we're going to see a little bit of uh, how he works and stuff. But, yeah, it, it, it was definitely a good positive experience, just, like, seeing all that and doing all that, you know, all that other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um... Next up here we have Tears of Metal. This is like a 
uh, Highland Combat uh, game. Uh, <laughs> I think it was like it started off like the Scots Revenge or something like that, which I thought was like kind of got a pop out of me. Uh, this is like a roguelike game. Uh, people don't know, like the team that made this, I can't remember the name of the studio. They made Blood Root, which is a game that Gables and I oh, both yeah. played and really, really liked. That was really good. So it's kind of a change of uh, scenery for them as well. Um, I don't know if it's a me game, especially being a roguelike, uh, but uh, it, I, I think the game looks really cool for what it was, but it was not. It's definitely like I, I was down for it, and then I found out it was a roguelike, and I was like, oh, man, <laughs> why do we got to do this shit? Now, you see, this game came right after the whole reveal of the Street Fighter Year 2 characters and stuff like that. So this is kind of one of those casualty game reveals and stuff to where it's like, okay, I'm still kind of recovering of what I just went through and saw. But uh, yeah, to its credit, to its credit and stuff, there were some interesting aspects upon it, you know, because it's like you can do co-op stuff. You can actually get like a whole bunch of different power-ups because of roguelike elements and this and that. Like there's some interesting aspects of this game but at the same time it's like i feel like this is going to be taking a, even a while for me to even get remotely interested in wanting to play this yeah because <laughs> i've already played like a couple different roguelikes just this year with splatoon 3 Bellatro, and now there's like other type of roguelike games that i want to take president over and try to play before i play this <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's got to take a special game for me to like get into a roguelike so uh um no disrespect to it. it's it's definitely it's like it's for me personally, it's fighting an uphill battle. But like I said, there's always I, I, like I'm not a roguelike fan. There's always exceptions to the rule. So let's mm-hmm. wait to see on that one. Uh, next up, yeah, I feel like we could just skip over this one. Delta Force Hawk uh, Hawk Ops. Uh, they announced yep. a campaign for that one. I'm just gonna skip over that one. Uh, you mentioned at the top of the show, Fatal Fury City of Wolves. Uh, this is coming early 2025. Uh, Gables, um, this is like I saw this. I'm like, oh yeah, Gables is gonna be excited for this one. What are you thinking? Oh, yeah. Dude, I am excited about this trailer. I mean, the reveal trailer, like one of the classic characters from Garo and stuff, plus like a new character and stuff that's fully represented in this game. Basically, it's a student from like uh, another like fighter from one of the previous games because he has like half of his mask or something on or something like that. But uh, no, I love the reveal trailers and stuff because you get a classic character. You get like all the, the stage, like uh, I think Jeanette, I think her name is if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm trying to remember things, you know. It's like, I'm s- my mind is just so fucking tired right at this moment. Um, oh, gosh. I did love the reveal of this trailer because it's like, there's a lot of interesting combos that I initially saw right after this reveal trailer in and of itself. I mean, the game looks fucking fantastic itself. The reveal trailer for the B. lady Jeanette. and stuff. I mean, B. Jeanette, that's right. Vox Ripper? Yeah. Vox I'm watch, River. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm watching the trailer right now, so. Yeah, for B. Jeanette and stuff, just a whole bunch of the different moves and stuff that she was executing and stuff that was really cool. She had a character, like, a trailer right after that was shown, like, on the Summer Games Fest stuff and goes into some bit of her moves and some of her basic combos, which those ones were pretty hilarious <laughs> in yeah. some aspects. Like, she literally just, like, uh, in order to try to like stun an enemy or something she literally just bends over right and like it just hits the enemy and stuff into like almost like uh pops them up in the air and stuff so she can execute some of her kicks and stuff like diving kicks and stuff to their face and it's just so hilarious i was watching maximilian dude just do like a freeze frame and stuff just the exact moment <laughs> of when she bent over and stuff like that and it's like it, it hits rock right and he just goes flying up and the thing is like oh geez. <laughs> <laughs> but um uh... Yeah, Vox Ripper had some interesting, like, combos and stuff from his character videos, too. But, yeah, just more confirmation of uh, additional characters inside the new Garo game and stuff. And it's shaping up to be a pretty interesting-looking game that's going to release early 2025. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, next up, this is uh, the Tyler Corner uh, Tyler Corner here, so just bear with me. Uh, Blumhouse Games came out. So we knew they were coming out. We knew they were going to show something. Um, did not know they were going to show six fucking games which is really exciting mm-hmm. a lot of, i think most people thought like so people don't know blumhouse is a really like they make a lot of really good uh horror game uh horror movies uh so mm-hmm. they, 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 like, the may game they uh made the uh, uh five nights at freddy stuff like that they made a bunch of really they made a really a bunch of like a lot of like the, the best horror, horror movies that come out in the last handful of years uh, handful of years they mm-hmm. made them so when they announced like they're they're getting, jumping into like publishing games, I was like, okay, like I think most of us thought, okay, they're gonna like make game versions of their movies like based off the IPs. Even better, Gables, that's not at all what they're doing. 
they're making they announced not only a game they announced six games they're doing that they're doing they're like completely different like these are none of them are based off their ip they're their own fucking thing um one of them is called uh i don't c-r-i-s-o-l i don't know if it's chrysal or chrysal uh theaters of uh idols this is a first person adventure set on the unholy island of Toromenso. um it's a survival game. Uh, we have Grave Seasons. This is like, it looked like a garden game, but with murder is what they said. Uh, so I'm interested in that one. Uh, Sleep Awake is a first person game that takes place in the distant future. Following a girl uh, named Katja as she struggles against dangerous enemies and, as, uh, and her own self. The one that really, this one got the most gameplay, so uh, or the most like the most time of it. It was actually at Day of the Devs, which happened later on. We also had Day of the Devs and uh, Devolver Digital, which... Gables, I don't know if you watched Evolver Digital yet. Fucking check the shit out, dude. It's fucking awesome. Um, okay. But uh, it's only 21 minutes, but it's fucking awesome. I cannot... Like, they fucking did it again, dude. They just keep doing it. I don't know how, but they keep doing it. It's fantastic. Anyways, um, <laughs> so like I said, the uh, Grave Seasons is the uh, like the, the garden game with, with murder. Uh, Sleep Awake is the other game I mentioned. That's more of a first-person survival game. Um, the one that like it was at Day of the Devs. Oh, Fear of the uh, Fear of the Spotlight. Um, it very much like Crow Country vibes. We just talked about a few weeks ago. It looks like an old school like Resident Evil game. This is very much PS1 era like graphics. Uh, but you are like it's, you're like you're with like a friend and like uh, like you're in a high school. I don't know if you're high school students, but you're, like you're in a school like in a band school. And a bunch of like crazy shit happens. You're trying to solve puzzles and survive in this high school. Looks fantastic. Um, I love the fact that we are. Like, we always talk about, like, the N64, PS1 era, like, age kind of the worst. You know, like, you go back, like, you look at Super Nintendo, NES games, GameCube games even, and that area, era, they, like, they age pretty well. Like, you can go back to them, and, like, yeah, they're a little rough, but, like, they age okay. But, the, but you look at that PS1, N64 era, it's like, ooh. <laughs> but, like, I'm so happy that we're, though, in the era now of, like, we could just make a game that looks like a PS1 game, and it fucking rules. I didn't think it would happen, but Fear the Spotlight my God, I don't think I don't think we had a release date for this one, but this this, this did get the most gameplay time. Like it was like a snippet in this, but then I go watch the trailer later on on the day of the devs, and this looks awesome. This is a day one buy for Tyler. Uh, the simulation is another game that uh, this is like a uh, adventure game. Um, don't know too much about, it, but like you're trying to solve um, a like a, you're like a, I don't know if you're like a cop or what, but you're trying to like solve a case here. Uh, that looked fantastic. The other one we didn't we didn't really get any like, gameplay for, but they did announce just kind of like the big one here. Uh, this is from Sam Barlow who did like Her Sword Immortality. His next game, uh, Project C, is what's being called right now. So, mm. uh, but like to come out and just announce um, that they are making six goddamn games. Um, so yeah, it's pretty exciting. So um, yeah, I I'm blown away by this. Was not expecting any of that. Uh, I like the Blumhouse. Uh, so I like a lot of the Blumhouse movies that are that I've seen so far. Uh, but yeah, blown away by that one. Gibbs, anything you want to mention on that one before we move on? Well, no, not really. I was really surprised to see this movie studio all of a sudden like just evolve into a like a game developer and stuff and just have a bunch of original concepts that uh, actually some looked fairly interesting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Fear of Spotlight, man. Just give me a fucking date. Um, tell me how much it costs. I'll pay. It's 50 bucks. I'm in. Um, Power Rangers Rita Rewind. Gables, uh, this is your game of the show. I'm going to call it right now. Uh, <laughs> this is, um, oh, fuck. What, the name of the studio, the the ones that made the the, the Team and T's Shredder's Revenge. Uh, Digital Eclipse? Yes. Okay. Yes. They're making this game. This game looks fucking awesome. The the me it's just not fair. I don't think they should be. Allowed. It's like when I it's like it's like when I watch a Pokemon video game trailer and I'm like, eh, but then they put the I'm like I'm not I'm not digging this. But then they put the Pokemon music in there. I'm like I'm all in. And then they put they put the fucking uh, Power Rangers song in here and I'm like you could have just it could have been a dude shitting on the screen. I'm like I'm in. I'm I'm I'll buy it. Whatever it is, I'm all in. Uh, Gables, it's it's gonna have online multiplayer. It's gonna have couch co-op. I'm fucking in. Get me this shit right fucking now. What about you? Oh my gosh. When the music started playing and everything else, I'm like, wait a minute. I know that song. What's going on? And all of a sudden it's like, it's a beat em up. It's like a, you have like a five player, like co-op, like beat em up and stuff playing this game and stuff. And the, and the best part about it, it looks fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> it actually looks good. 
the stages look creative. There's all sorts of like various like amalgamation stuff with the putties and stuff like that to where you could actually see at one point there was like a two headed putty that was just like just like uh, going stuff. There you you have freaking rangers riding on a roller coaster and stuff and doing this and that. They teased Megazord battles, but they didn't show anything in regards to about it. It's like that's what I want. Because let me tell you something, Tyler. Back when I was a kid, I used to play a couple different fighting games, a couple different like beat 'em ups and stuff. I did not have Battle Toads. I did not have Double Dragon. No, for Super Nintendo, I had just Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo, I'm so and sorry. that's the game I loved playing over and over again. Not because it was Power Rangers and stuff, because honestly, it wasn't that bad of a beat 'em up. But the thing was, with that as well as Power Rangers the movie, that Super Nintendo game. There were awesome. There were there were literally like just awesome sort of ways to just not only just enjoy the show and stuff, but the games were actually fine. They were actually pretty fun and stuff. This game that they announced here, it's a. This looks like it's up to. It just looks like it's up tenfold to what anything like Power Rangers related I've seen since like say Battle for the Grid, that fighting game, which that Power Rangers game is pretty awesome too, but like. Seeing a lot of the different level designs, a lot of the different types of like stages. You have classic enemies. Let's say like you have Goldar, you have Rita, you have like you literally are fucking fighting against the eye guy when it's in this giant form, you know. And for those wondering what some of those monsters mean, you know, there is literally a a monster that Rita Repulsa sends out to fight the Power Rangers in with and stuff. He's called the Eye Guy, right? He's nothing but a monster composed of nothing but eyeballs. And it's pretty freaking hilarious when you see it. Think of that episode of Aqua Teen Hunger Force where Carl has his head sitting in multiple different bodies and Frylock decides to attach his body to a bunch of eyes and stuff. And one is Carl's first reaction is like, why do my kneecaps feel like they're going to tear up? <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like that, but just kind of, it's just kind of a little bit more epic in scale. But, uh, well, that's my random Aqua Teen Hunger Force quote of the day. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love this game, dude. This definitely was one of the big highlights and stuff. I actually did have a cluster of things that I'm very much looking forward to. Like, there was some few indie game stuff, right? But yet, even with some of the AAA stuff that was presented there, I did initially latched on to because, yeah, I like fighting games, I like Sonic games, I like freaking Power Ranger stuff, and this definitely does look like this thing was thought more, like, you know, thought better through than, say, like, the G.I. Joe battle, like, beat him up or the double dragon beat him up yeah. or some i think that geo gi joe one looks okay but not it looks the, okay but, but not great yeah they, we did get another trailer for that today as well um i don't know if we got released it yet or not uh next up gable another one of my um definitely this is like if uh neva is number one this is probably number two Deer and boy, it's basically it's another Tyler. <laughs> it's another Tyler S. Tyler game here. Okay, okay? like Deer just go with boy. me on this one. It is <laughs> just Tyler Bate. This is not fair to me. This is just not fair. It is basically like if you just made like a play dead game. So like inside a limbo, uh, or like Planet of Lana, those style of games. But you are a boy whose best friend is a deer, and then also the deer like his mother dies, which already emotionally hits me right in the right here. Right there in the heart. And then on top of that, he, he grows up as the game goes on. And you have to solve puzzles as you go. Um, and like it looks like he gets powers as he gets older. I'm not really sure what's happening here, Gables. But this is what I call my shit. This is 100% my shit. I will be buying this one the second it comes out. Not even the second it comes out. The second I can give them money for this thing, I will give them money for this thing. I don't care if I have to wait a year like, hey, pre-order now, and then the game was a year away. I'm doing it. I'm in. I'm in. 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks. I'm in. Let me buy it. I just want to buy this game because this is what I call Tyler Bate. I'm fucking in. I don't think we got. I don't think this. Is, I think it's coming this year. Um, no, it's not. It just says release. It says wish list now. Fuck. I'm playing this game in like 2027. That I, I just another reason Gables to live till 2027. So we're just adding reasons, um, which is good. I think the more reasons, the better. Uh, but yeah, this is what I call my shit. Um, I don't, I'm assuming you're not going to add anything to this one, Gables. I'm going to move on to the next thing here. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. Uh, I thought this trailer was very funny. I didn't know this game was very was really funny, uh, but it's a game I will never play. So uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, 
Gables, are you is, this, is Kingdom Come a game you're interested in? Because I am not. I haven't really too much of interest in the interest in the franchise. I did think the trailer was really hilarious and stuff. I think there was, <laughs> I think there was literally at one point where it flashes to like him talking about sin, and all of a sudden you just get a flash to this one like. Uh, dude just banging this chick on the yeah. table just randomly like what the fuck we just dude. randomly have a, like a like a quick like like a thrust scene in there it's very weird um next up here though slitterhead i just slitherhead i just hate the way that the word sounds uh, and i don't like it i think we should ban that word um but this is from the people that created uh silent hill this is their big game um they they kind of revealed I think a couple of years ago at Game Awards or Summer Game Fest Game Aware but it was it's revealed previously but we got like a teaser CGI trailer this is actually the gameplay this did leak yesterday uh, we got like the release date and the price point I believe it's sixty dollars November eighth is the uh, date for this one um, but like you basically like um, like you can possess people and then like uh, also turns into like a like one v one like combat game. Uh, but also, Gables, I think this game just looks like fucking shit. <laughs> I, well, this game definitely has a lot going on for it where it's like there's a lot of things happening all at once. You're possessing a whole bunch of different people and creatures. This comes from the mind of the dude that that was instrumental in like uh, creating like Silent Hill and stuff. So a lot of these aspects and stuff. We're like, I know there's a lot of ideas he was thinking about with this game, but I thought it was just gonna be like a like a suspenseful sort of like horror style game. I didn't realize it was gonna be like a body possession kind of like the thing sort of trailer or something like that, you know? Or you know what it kind of reminds me of though? It's like, <laughs> ow, 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 ow! Sorry, my dog is like biting my nose right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't want that in your, my mouth. What? Anyway, <laughs> just like his tongue in my mouth. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyways, it's like I thought that the gameplay itself looks looked disjointed, and I did not really think at all that this game gameplay looked kind of cohesive. I thought it looked just kind of random, and like other aspects were kind of weird about it, but it just didn't give me that sense of oh hey, I want to play this right away. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm down to be surprised when the reviews come out for this thing, but this is a game I think it's going to come and it's going to review poorly and then we'll move on from, um, next up here, Gables, a game that like, I think just for me personally was maybe the one of the funniest, the most standout parts of the entire, uh, uh, summer game fest killer bean, yeah. um, <laughs> this one. trailer and gameplay, everything about it was fucking fantastic. I love the comedy of it. It was like, you play as a bean that is like completely over the top feels like an 80s 90s action film but like almost like gta where like um he like he's driving around but then like he like crashes the car and he jumps out turns slow motion almost like max Payne. Yeah. he starts shooting people he can like bend bullets or ricochet bullets off of other bullets into people um he like he's at one point like they shooting people out of windows yeah stuff. yeah he does like the <laughs> slow motion dive yeah out the window and shoots other people through a window um he like at one point like so with those a grenade and he catches it in the air and he does like a between the legs like a slam dunk of the grenade back to the people. Uh, this is coming early access uh, this year. Um, but like, yeah, there's like one point where like, he's like driving a fucking uh, like a, a boat through like a giant boss battle. Uh, I don't yeah. know. It's coming early access. Like, well, he also like rock bottom somebody and does a German suplex as well. Uh, I don't know if this game's any good or if it will be any good, but I will say they have my attention. Dude. You know, when I first saw this Bean game, I actually thought it was like a freaking sequel or something to James Pond or something like that, that Jesus old freaking Christ. licensed shit and stuff. And then I realized, okay, that's kind of a fever dream right there. And it looks, just the whole absurdity of it all is just so awesome. I mean, this is one dude that created this game. Yep. Yep. And what's the most hilarious part about it is like just the most obscure, so over the top ways he goes and just kills other beans and stuff. At one point, he's literally just doing a break dance and stuff yes. like that. Yeah, avoid bullets. <laughs> to avoid bullets, jumping out a window, just shoot someone through another window, like yeah. freaking. Oh god, just various dunks, various like other crap and stuff. It's it just looks like it's just gonna be a fun time. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's a, it's coming early access this summer. Uh, it's definitely gonna be a game I'm gonna wait for like 1.0 to like actually check out yeah. though, because I'm uh, not early access guy. So, next up here, uh, Game Breakers is a studio I love very much. They made Haven, one of my favorite games of all time. 
Uh, this is the next game. It's called Karen, C A I R N. Uh, this is that climbing game where like you got like almost like mm. you control each individual limb. Uh, I don't know like if I miss somewhere in the gaming industry where, where like all of a sudden uh, climbing games are like the new hot thing, uh, but I don't like it. <laughs> I'm not into it. <laughs> it is not a thing for me. It just seemed like a really gritty climbing game and stuff like that. Like you could see a lot of the struggles of this uh, female hiker or stuff as she's climbing up these mountains and trying to take one step at a time, try to conquer like like her own kind of like mortality, her own abilities and stuff and try to improve herself bit by bit and everything in of itself. I understand what they, what the game is kind of aiming for and stuff, but at the same time, do I really want to play this style of game to where it's just going to be a lot of repetitive, just like climbing this way, climbing that way, meticulously putting my pin and stuff like that. So that way when I do like fall or something, my line is just going to catch me doing this and doing that. I mean, it just seems like a lot of stress, Tyler. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, I love like um, Don't Nod, and they made a climbing game last year called Jusant, yes. and I played it on Game yes. Pass, and I didn't like that game that much. And like, if yeah. Don't Nod can't make a game, a climbing game that I love, I feel like um, it's probably pretty hard for anybody to make a, a climbing game that I'll love. As much as I love like Haven and uh, Game Breaker, like it's just this is not gonna be a game I love. Yeah, um, it's just the thing about it, Tyler. It's like we're so used to like climbing mechanics in certain games and stuff that. Uh, when we have a game that's just dedicated to just climbing itself, just kind of weird and just, just jointed in yeah. some aspects. If you add like a cute fox to the game and he grows alongside you, then I'm in. But until then, I'm out. So that's uh, note, note to developers out there. You add a cute pet, I'm in. Um, next up here, Unknown 9 Awakening. Uh, this is a... Um, uh, I can't, I can't, oh, yeah, this is the game where like you... Like, you, you, like you're, plays a woman and she's like she like she's trying to get revenge for people that wronged her but like she can like almost like she gets like at one point she gets captured and like she like jumps into like their body and controls them real fast like break out what she's doing like she could, could take control of people and use that to her advantage to get through the situations um i thought i kind of like the premise of it um i don't know like I, i'd like to see more it's definitely a game that like when we get like a big blowout for i'll be i'll be interested to check it out uh, but there's, I don't know. I feel like it was a very quick trailer. It wasn't a lot to it. Um, but I would like to see more of it when it, when it does happen. Dude, there's just something about this summer games thing to where we just have people like just jumping into other people's bodies. I mean, we just saw Slitherhead to where we just like there's a creature yeah, that jumped right, yeah. to and from different people, different objects. And then we have a game now where we have a girl, like a lady or something jumping in other people's bodies and stuff like that. I mean, I think it was kind of a weird sort of like coincidence going in through, but for the game itself, man, the game itself didn't look too appealing to me. Yeah, I, I, I'm down to check out more of it. It's just I, I just I want to see like more of what the game is. Um, next up here, Inner Sloth came out. Uh, these are the people that made like, Among Us. Um, a really cool moment here. So like we, um, for some of I forgot to mention at the top of the show, like Jeff Keighley actually mentioned all of the uh, layoffs or anything like that. With, you know, kind of tough gear. So we've had the year plus. Now the gaming industry, which is really cool, because something I think that like a bit of criticism of him is kind of like, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, kind of avoiding like the dark stuff of the gaming industry. Uh, it was really cool of him come come out there and do that. And it's definitely almost like we, when you look back upon it, him talking about like talking about the game industry and like focusing, like he mentioned, like here are the most played games on Steam so far this year, and he's like all these indie games are on there, and it almost kind of like laid the groundwork for what the rest of the show would be of like. This this show was really focused on like double A indie games and stuff. That was like the main focus of the show. And it's kind of like when you look back upon it, like I said, it almost like you can kind of see like he was like laying down, like showing you like, hey, this show is gonna focus on those things. And it's really cool. Inner Sloth came out. Obviously, they make Among Us. This studio has been just fucking raking in cash uh, for a few years now. Uh, it was really cool like to see them to kind of like take that money and use it back uh, towards um, to the video game industry and like actually like publishing and helping uh, developers develop their, their games. And it's really cool. They show up a bunch of like games of theirs. I think they show up like five or six games, but it was really great. I thought it was like a really cool thing to have them come out here on stage and kind of celebrate that. And like, like I said, we talked about like, this has been a rough year. We see all these, like here, all these indie studios shutting down because they can't find people to help them pub, uh, publish their games uh, or help fund their games um, here. Even like big major studios close down for whatever reason and have massive layoffs. It's cool. It's like, Hey, like, it's just kind of nice to have that kind of that moment here uh, for gaming. And then they all shut off. We have a uh, little teaser trailer for them doing the Among Us TV show, which I think it's is it coming to Netflix. I can't remember where it's going to. Um, or no, I think it's coming to Paramount actually. Um, 
But oh, it, Paramount. Okay, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, well, it said CBS Interactive, so that's Paramount. If I remember correctly. Yep. What's weird though is like they showed off, like they they did like here's a teaser trailer for our our um, TV show, and then there was no voice acting, but they have this like all star cast of voice actors that are going to be in this TV show. So I don't Including know if this like, is, like Elijah Wood. <laughs> yeah, Elijah Wood, Ashley Johnson, Patton Oswalt, a bunch of people are going to be in this, and like I I almost wonder if this is like kind of like the almost like the intro song theme thing to the TV show. Yeah, I do it then. But it was like very weird. I'm like, fucking, you have all these people, like, fucking show them off a little bit. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously, though. I mean, I'm very excited, though, that uh, the creators here from Among Us and stuff are helping other indies in terms of funding their own games and stuff like that. Just giving back to the indie community in general. On top of that, I'm just most excited, though, for just uh, to see what this Among Us movie is going to this gonna be, you know. This, yeah. no, it wasn't a movie or TV, TV show. show. TV show. TV show. I'm just more. Ex- I'm more excited just about the TV show aspect and stuff, and see how that's gonna do. Because I'm really fascinated to see how a Among Us series is going to play out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. Um, next up here gave us something. Unfortunately, you'll be excited about uh, <laughs> Sonic Cross Shadows Generation. Uh, we got some detail- details on that. This all leaked out um, a couple days ago, though. Yeah. Uh, I think it's coming October 25th, if I had that correctly. Um, oh. At uh, so in October. Uh, just showed a bunch of like uh, kind of the main thing. It's almost like it's it, like it's like Sonic Generations, but then they added like a shadow mode to it. So I, mm. I don't know. People, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're, you're unfortunately pretty excited about this one. Well, I am pretty excited about this one. Absolutely. I mean, I'm excited to play like some of the classic courses and stuff as Sonic, as also Retro Sonic, as also Shadow. Also, like, I don't know if you got this, though, but the pre-order bonus and stuff like that is just basically the entire, like, character skin for the original Sonic from, like, Sonic Adventure. I thought that was kind of hilarious that the low res, the low res like, Sonic from the Dreamcast days is going to be a pre-orderable bonus. But, uh, yeah, that's that's more reminiscent of, like, when you're playing a Mario Odyssey and then all of a sudden you you unlock the whole Mario 64 skin. Yeah, but, but, but that's uh, a good game, unlike Sonic games. <laughs> I still remain hopeful that this one's going to be a fun one just to play through. Because Sonic Generations in of itself, when it did release, was a fairly comparable game. Very fun from people back in the day. But uh, for this Cross Shadow stuff, their whole touting Year of Shadow stuff they're doing for Sega, I really think that this is going to be a fun one just to <laughs> mess around with. I like how like, we talked about last week, but I like the fact that it's the Year of Shadow and they did nothing for Shadow yet. <laughs> like, I know. like so far Except they've just announced this one game. project and it's like all right it's a year of shadow but we have <laughs> nothing planned uh then announcing keanu reeves is the voice actor for shadow <laughs> yeah so I, I guess we're getting the movie in december shock generation it's it's considered a good sonic game it's got a 77 on metacritic so take that for what you will um battle aces this is like it had like a really great intro anime intro uh and then it was like oh this game looks fantastic and then it was the rts so um <laughs> Yeah. That was almost like when we were watching the PlayStation, like State of Play and stuff, to where we're like, we're what? Look at this game. Oh, this game looks pretty fun and stuff like that. Like you know, like just thinking, it's like we're trying to guess what it is. I think that was for Conquered and stuff like that. Yeah. Where it's like, oh yeah, yeah, this kind of has uh, themes like Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh wait a minute, there's yeah. subclasses. There's other this. It's like, oh god dang it, it's a five v five freaking hero shooter. Right. And it's yeah. like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's the same feel I kind of have with Battle Ace. It's like, okay, well, we're having a cinematic coping and stuff. It's a lot of action, this and that and stuff. And then all of a sudden, the developer comes out on stage. It's like, we're going to yeah, have it's... like a freaking RTS. I'm yeah. like, oh. He did say it's like an RTS for everyone. They talk about like they're making them a little more accessible for people out there, which is pretty, which is cool because definitely RTS yeah. games are pretty fucking hardcore. So uh, I guess that's pretty cool. Like, hey, they're like, they're, they're trying to like, get like because like like the click times is pretty crazy click clicks per second and stuff like that so um that's cool to make it like a little more bearable for people, like make it a little easier for people to jump into but mm. yeah i mean come on like I, i'm I don't, i'm just gonna boycott this game just off principle for based on how <laughs> how, how cool that initial fucking teaser was um uh, next is a, a game that uh, i will not be boycotting uh i'll be doing the exact opposite i'll be buying that as soon as i can tomorrow because that's when it's out Alan Wake 2, uh, they uh, came out. They have Night Spring DLC. They also announced that there will be a physical uh, cl- uh, edition coming out. Uh, they'll, you'll be able to buy that to, uh, tomorrow on Saturday as well. Um, mm. There'll be a, a, a collector edition as well you can buy. Um, I really, really liked uh, Alan Wake 2, um, but I loved what they showed up here. So they have a, they have the DLC. Uh, this is um, 
basically it's, it's called Night Springs. Night Springs is like their Twilight Zone in the universe mm-hmm. of Alan Wake. Uh, and they have like it's, it's I don't know if they I'm confused though if it's like all three episodes or if it's gonna be like broken up and like they're gonna come out uh, sporadically or what. But basically like uh, they're like what if scenarios where like one one of them like it's three different characters that you uh, you play as in each each um, one. So you play as Rose, who was the waitress from the first game, who was like an Alan Wake super fan, which is pretty cool. I thought the like the, the uh, story and all the stuff of it was really funny. Uh, uh, I think Tim Breaker. Uh, he was the sheriff in Alan Wake 2. He was also uh, the main character from uh, Quantum Break, uh, but they don't own the uh, rights to Quantum Break, so it's, it's it's definitely kind of funny that basically he's just back, but a different character. Uh, he's one of the other characters uh, characters in this game. And also Jesse Fadden, who is the character from Control, who I audibly yelled, and I went, fuck yeah! And I did like a fist pump thing. I'm I, When I saw that, I'm like, I'm all in. I love the fact that they keep doing, like, they did the same thing with... Uh, Control when they did the DLC, they did like the Alan Wake teaser in there. So I think it's really cool that like, they like they, they do elements in the, of these games where like they tie the Alan Wake and Control into the same universe. So it's definitely cool to like see them do the same thing here um, as well with this DLC. But uh, this is uh, uh, as soon as I can buy this and play it, I'm going to be doing that, which is tomorrow. I thought it was kind of interesting when they announced the physical versions of this game and stuff. It's a collector's edition and a deluxe edition. So there's no standard edition on. No, there's there's a, there's, a, there's a physical edition and there's gonna be like the collector edition. Okay, so yeah. the physical edition itself is a straight seventy dollars, right? I don't know. They, don't, they haven't said anything. There's no price point yet, but there will be like a yeah, there'll be a regular edition and there'll be like the crazy collector edition. Yeah, I was just kind of wondering about it. The way how he announced this stuff, it sounded like to me that it was like, uh, you know, how they have like certain editions of games and stuff, and they go and launch them. Like, say, there's the base the base edition and then there's like there's like the whole collector stuff where it has like some bit of extra stuff and then you have the most extravagant version of stuff that has every single thing that's like cost like two times the initial worth of its game and stuff it's like there's a badass statue though i'm only (laughs) but uh i didn't really i didn't really delve too much into like the alan wake 2 stuff because i really i really didn't play anything of like alan wake 2 yeah but uh, i know that shitty sonic games but anyway, in regards <laughs> to Alan Wake 2, when it comes to when it comes to that, you know, I'm very excited for people to get to enjoy not only delving into the game once again and stuff, but, do, but enjoying certain content and aspects that tie it together, like other games from Remedy's back catalog and stuff like that, like say Control and the original Alan Wake. So it's yeah. going to be a fun time for people tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I'm excited to dive into that one. Uh, next up here, New World uh, Eight Aeternum. Eight, eight, who cares a shit? It's an Amazon. MMO game. Um, I believe it's also coming like a leak that's coming to consoles as well. If I'm not, yeah, it's mm-hmm. coming to consoles. I think it was like it was like a banner on PlayStation at one point uh, earlier in the day, and then it, before it was actually announced. So this is that Amazon game that they put out like last year or two years ago. Um, they're adding some new content to it. So what do you fucking do? Um, <laughs> next up here, Kunuti Gami Path of Goddess. That is that Capcom game. That's coming to Game Pass. They've shown up multiple times. Gables. I don't know what the fuck this game is. Every time I see it, I am more confused than I was the last time. Is it an RCS? I don't think I under- is it Command yeah. and Conquer? Is it an action game? What the fuck is this game? It just reminds me of just a straight action game with certain RTS elements from it. That's what it kind of got from the initial gameplay I saw of it this time. But it's coming out fairly soon. <laughs> yeah, uh, July 19th. Uh, it's coming to Game Pass as well. So, uh mm. I imagine people. I'm hoping people can like play this game at, at Summer Game Fest because I want someone to like just tell me what the fuck this game is because I'm so fucking confused. Mm. I don't think it's a game. I, whether regardless of what it is, I don't think I'm gonna play it. I just want to know what it is. I'm just come here. That's the most curiosity I have for this game because I don't know what the fuck it is. Mm. Uh, next up here, Hyperlight Breaker. Uh, they announced that will be uh, coming sometime this summer at early access. So that's mm. it. Um, yeah. So I'm a huge fan of the Hyperlight games. Uh, I don't know. if This is gonna be a game I'm gonna be waiting for 1.01. So, um, mm-hmm. Skate was there, Gables. Um, yeah, got a really funny trailer with Tim Robinson. I love Tim Robinson, uh, very funny. Uh, but man, what a really disappointing like, there was like 30 seconds of actual, like, some gameplay in there. Just announced, yeah, doing, it's a pre pre alpha, and you'll, you'll be you can sign up now for some uh, to get into the uh, beta on consoles. So, that's coming in fall. 
Yeah, I know, right? I mean, they had that excellent, like, introduction to this trailer and stuff like that for Skate, and then, like, when you go to the gameplay footage, you just see a whole bunch of people, like, all at once just skateboarding and stuff and doing this and that and stuff, and uh, the gameplay of itself, I know, is in pre-alpha, alpha, and stuff like that, or whatever the hell they try to announce this thing as being and stuff, but, uh, yeah, there are definitely some, uh, there's definitely some, like, edge of stuff they gotta iron out with this game, because it looks rough right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, they, they've been like pretty open. They've been doing like a lot of like a lot of videos and stuff like that. They've been doing a good job of like keeping people posted on it. So we've been seeing a lot of uh, there's been people like in the beta on the PC side for a long time now. So um, which is cool uh, or like the alpha, whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah, as long I, as they have a straight single player experience, I mean that's all I care about. Yeah, I mean <laughs> it's, this game is gonna be free to play. So um, ah, yeah. So I, like we already know that, but uh, yeah, I just it's just been I don't know, like. I'm, I loved everything before that, and I just kind of wish we had a little bit more more uh, to it. Like, I wasn't expecting like a release date, but I was kind of bummed that like we did like this whole grand opening to like get like a thirty second. Hey, sign yep. up for the uh, alpha now on, on consoles. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, well, I say I really love Skate. I really love Skate Three as well. But like uh, this one, this one so far, it just needs to. There's got to be some more things get me enticed to play it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm excited for like when we get like we get to like the 1.0 closer to that and mm. kind of actually see some real gameplay on this thing. So uh, that's what I'll be excited for it. Um, next up here, Power World. They announced a bunch of new stuff they're adding to it. They had like a raid. There's a new boss. Uh, a couple new areas. There's an arena mode to it as well, which looks pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, some new weapons, stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. Man, they they also like work. They said they're like they have dedicated Xbox servers, which is cool. Um, I feel like I have my time with with Power World, unless like there's been like uh, if this comes out and people are like raving about it, then I'll jump back into because I enjoy my time with it. But uh, uh, it's just more like I don't like, I don't really care for the survival aspect of it. Like just like if it, it, it focused less on that, like and was more of just like a a a, play, a Pokemon game, I would be like more enticed to jump into it more. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same mind as you, dude. It's like I. I think Power World doing what they're doing and stuff like that is absolutely fantastic. I mean, they were incredibly successful basically just making a great Pokemon clone and stuff, but having their own their own swing of it, their own like various features and stuff about it that made it completely different than what like Nintendo does with their series and stuff. And they have more people now interested in playing their series than they do with the regular Pokemon games right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's still one of like uh we don't hear about it too much, but it's still one of the most uh, like top 10 play games every month on steam which is pretty yes impressive. uh and xbox as well so um next up here uh, they spent 12 hours talking about valorant it's coming to playstation and xbox on the 14th who gives a shit um mm. I, a lot of people give a shit I, I just i don't give a shit uh monster Hunter wilds we got some more gameplay on this one i guess this is like one of the first like uh enemies you're gonna fight we got some more on that they did say though we're gonna see some like we're gonna see more of a deep dive at gamescom uh for that and then the last thing they okay. showed off here was phantom blade zero uh Ooh. kind of a weird one last thing i feel like um and look the trailer looks great i think everything looks fine about this game looks good um i don't know i just think I, jeff keely didn't mention you don't have the one more thing uh i just i mean what a what a weird last thing but i mean it, it definitely looked... was kind of a weird kind of last thing and stuff to end the summer's game best thing on just phantom blade zero i mean and all honesty and stuff, they should have just ended, they should have just ended it like just not on the Valorant stuff. I mean, no, no one, no, no one really gave a shit about the Valorant stuff. Got it. But uh, they should have. Honestly, I don't know how you could have ended this show. Really, I mean, you could yeah. have just had the Among Us stuff. Like, oh hey, there's an Among Us TV show. Because yeah, you always you like the 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 key to like really good showcases, like we mentioned, is like like usually when I like you you start with something big. I thought the Lego Adventures was was a solid opener. Um, you know, in the middle, there's probably something else, like Alan Wake. I think it was like the big middle thing. Um, uh, I, I think like Monster and Wilds would have been like a bigger ending if we didn't just see it last week at State of Play and they didn't announce yeah. it would be here. Like if we didn't know it was gonna be here, we didn't just have the thing last week. This would have been a great like ender here. Like we finally get some gameplay. Here's like a cool boss fight. You see it real fast. Hey, there's more here. Yes. We're, we're gonna see a bunch more at Gamescom. Boom, there you go. Like that would have been more exciting. Uh, but like, yeah, like the fan blades are like, no offense to that game. I think the game looks cool. Like these basically is like, Hey, like we're going to be doing like a tour thing. So if you're going to any like gaming event over the next like six months, we'll be there. So check it, check us out, please. But yeah, like, I was like, all right. Like I, I get like, yeah, you don't have that crazy one more thing. Uh, but, and there wasn't like a ton of big stuff here. 
Um, but yeah, I think I think you kind of, I, I I think honestly, you, even what we had here, Monster Wilds being that last thing probably would have been the way to do it. But yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, I don't. But that being said, though, the Phantom Blade stuff. I mean, I thought the combat looked fairly good, fairly good. Like a lot of new stuff, and then just the character animations and stuff when the when the guy's like fighting that one chick and stuff like that. And when she goes to attack you and you block and stuff, you can literally see her standing on top of the hilt of her sword and stuff like that while she's doing that stuff. Like, Whoa, what the fuck? (laughs) Just aspects of that just made the, just the whole like visual stuff really like splendid in terms of creativity that they're doing with each of their characters in terms of their fighting styles and this and that, you know, Yeah, I'm, I'm always a sucker for a good action game though. That's just me. Yeah, look cool. It was kind of something we talked last week, though, with the state of play where we had like two games that looked exactly the same. I even mentioned yes. Phantom Blade Zero. I'm like, man, we just had Phantom Blade Zero last year at State of Play, and then we get the, get two more of these games. I just feel like there, there's just a million out there. Obviously, like this could be better than those ones, but it's just like, uh, like after a while, they all start to blend in after a while. But I mean, right. overall, Gable's like one out of 10. You can use half stars if you want to here. Overall thoughts at, at for the show at the end. Um, let's see. Obviously, yeah, there there weren't a lot of like exactly big, big announcements and stuff like that, but the announcements that we did get that were fairly sizable. I mean, think of it this way, this is the first time that like uh, I can remember a PlayStation franchise, even like with a spin off thing making its way to a Nintendo system, like in over like thirty years or so. Um the whole thing with like a King of Fighter characters like being inside of a mainline Street Fighter game as guest characters that one was big. The whole aspect of uh, Among Us and stuff like that, like having its own television show and stuff and doing all that stuff. I mean, there were definitely some aspects and stuff that were interesting. Overall, there were there were just sort of like like half and half stuff with indie stuff. You know how like. You'll have some indie games that are announced and stuff that you'll have completely no interest in, and then yep. and then some that absolutely like just spark your interest. There were some indie games I did like their initial show and stuff, but there was definitely a lot of lulls in between. And especially when it came to the whole Valorant stuff, I didn't give a shit about the whole squad based shooters. I didn't give a shit about, but I thought that for what it aimed for, I thought the show was definitely better than the state of play. Because there was definitely more interesting stuff. And I gave the state of play like a five out of ten. I'm gonna give this one a seven out of ten. Because wow. okay. this one definitely had some more positives and there were definitely more things that appealed to me, even though there were kind of long gaps between the first initial beginning of the show all the way up until like about you know, the Street Fighter stuff and then the the, the whole Garo City of Wolves stuff and then Seeing a bit of Sonic stuff, seeing a bit of like that Among Us stuff, you know, there was definitely aspects of it that I liked. Yeah, yeah, I think um, I think you're kind of like you may be a little higher because I was I was like way between like a six point yeah. five and a seven. Like I thought this was like a good, not great show. Um, like we like we were mentioned at the top, it did not have like those big, huge things. And like the bigger games they did have, we've already seen them mm-hmm. before. Like we talked about like Metaphor. Um, and like, yes. uh, Monster in the Wilds, like if those were, we didn't know, like yes. we said like a metaphor re Fantasio showcase like last month. Uh, so like if we didn't have all the information be- about those games before would have hit much harder here. Um, right. But yeah, like it's like I said, top, of sh- like a top of show, like it's all about like fine. If you could come out of this and you can find, you know, a two hour show here. Yeah. It's a long show. There's a lot of gaps in there, especially like I said, like the Valorant stuff hurt quite right. a bit. Uh, the finals, I guess the finals were only like a few minutes. It wasn't a major ordeal, but, uh, yeah, like, um, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with a seven. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give it a seven. I think you're right. Uh, okay. But like, coming out of it, like, yeah, there's, like I said, there's like five or six games that I'm really excited for. I'm going to, Night Springs come out tomorrow is I'm excited for. And yeah, so I'm overall really, really, I was, I'm pretty happy with this one. Like I said, didn't have like, oh my God, there was like fucking Half-Life 3 is here. Like there was nothing like that. Uh, but, um, yeah, like I'm a little surprised there's no Xbox stuff here. I figured like they might have something Xbox related to like tie into the Xbox showcase in a couple of days, but it's whatever. Um, I hope the, like he, Jeff Keeley mentioned that he hopes that like, Nintendo will join in this on one day because like it is very weird that like Nintendo just hasn't been involved in these. And like I get like right now, I'm not surprised. I guess I shouldn't be surprised this year because like I feel like they're just holding everything until they announce the next Switch. But um, yeah, I'm, I'll, I guess I'll, you know I don't know. I, I hope that they. I hope at Game Awards we see something from them because that'd be, be especially with the new console coming up. You want be a good time to put something out there. But uh, yeah, I think overall seven out of ten. I think that that's fair. Uh, wasn't yeah. There's definitely been better ones. 
Uh, but I feel like they had they had enough good stuff there that it, it kind of held up held up on its own. Uh, let's move on to some, like we'll, we'll run through this real fast here. Uh, some other news this week, Gables. Um, so uh, a couple things here. Uh, Toys for Bob's it did announce that they are officially making an Xbox game. Something we've known about through leaks information, but uh, confirmed there. We have no idea what the game is, but um, yeah, just kind of kind of out there that they're doing that. Uh, we talked about last week as well. Concord is officially $40. Um, so we'll see about that. Uh, Gibbles, uh, my game of the year. Uh, Astro, Astro Boy, Astro Bot, rather. Uh, I, I don't know why I keep doing that. Astro Bot will be $60. So that's going to be December 6th. Um, Could have made it 300 I would have bought it. So that's fine. Um, I would I would have yeah, sold. It's worth it for sixty. Yeah, I would have I would have cut out your kidney and sold it for, uh, on the black market to pay for this game <laughs> if I had to. Uh, then Dragon Age uh, Four is officially called Dragon Age the the Veil the Veil Guard, uh, and we will see a gameplay for that on uh, Tuesday, June twelfth. So we should get like fifteen minutes of gameplay and stuff like that uh, and uh, story trailer stuff for that. So I'm excited. That game was announced like forty five years ago, uh, and I'm excited to finally actually see for the first time ever actual gameplay and story yeah. stuff. So um yeah, you know, I've been like kind of waiting like should I jump back into uh uh the Dragon Age 3 cuz uh, I kind of fell off after like 40 hours, which I know is kind of a stupid statement, but I did. Uh but uh I like should I jump back into that, give it a second chance and uh I might do that because of that. Um Gables uh what's cool? We'll jump in what we've been playing Gables. Uh do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first, buddy? Yeah, let's let you go first. Okay. I, I feel like we both played the same thing. I've been playing more Paper yeah. Mario. Uh, I'm basically at the same point you are. I am nearly done with uh, Chapter 3. Uh, oh, okay. I'm like, I got to the Major League part of that. Uh, I'm, I'm getting close to the final boss. Uh, it, kind of more of the same. Uh, kind of like talked about last week. It's just like it is that pure n- nostalgia for me that is just continuing to hit. Uh, laugh out loud moments in there. I think the writing is so good in this game. Like. Uh, I just, yes. like I said, like I, I talk about like, you know, like I play Pokemon games more so for the nostalgia factor than I do the actual, like I enjoy playing these games. Uh, you know, especially like, go back and play some of like the ones that especially tie in like gen one and two, uh, hit for me. And this definitely, uh, are hitting for me. Like I, like, and like I said, like, I, I've gone back and like watched some like old gameplay of the first game. Just kind of like remind myself like how different, like in your, like, it's just like, I talk about like that, you know, there's not soldier, like you, the way you have it in your mind. Like, I just haven't looked up too much gameplay over the years mm-hmm. and just going back and looking at like the difference. And I'm just like, man, this is like nothing. Like I remember it looks so much better in my mind than what this game looks like on GameCube. And I'd say it looks like <laughs> shit, but like definitely looks so much better on this. It's be blown away. Obviously, like I know it's a, it's a, it's a remaster of a GameCube game, but it's still like, I can't believe how good this game, like from an art design, and everything looks on the Switch. A you know we're in year eight of this console, um, but it's gonna be blown away. I think I'm like probably eight nine hours into this game at this point now. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I'm just continuing to love this game. Uh, and Paper, uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Uh, what about you, Gables? Yeah, it's the same thing with me, really. I mean, I really didn't do too much this week other than like uh, like I did play some aspects in between chapter two and three and stuff like that, and then like go through the whole like. Uh, that whole side mission and stuff like that between like the mob boss and stuff like that. Yeah. And then uh, his, his daughter and yep. stuff like that. And like her fiance. And it's, it's kind of hilarious that, uh, that ends up that whole story element. I thought it was pretty funny and stuff to where like, uh, this is how initially you get your blitz create. You, how you get the, like the whole glitzville, like the ticket tickets and stuff like that is like basically convincing like her daughter and like, her boyfriend just to speak with the mob bosses to get their blessing and stuff, their marriage and stuff. But uh, let's see, for Glitzville, I haven't really gotten too far into it other than like, okay, I see who the initial like boss and like the initial like uh, potential like star that you're going to be getting by the completion of the chapter and stuff. All I do remember is from this chapter and stuff, you come across your Yoshi partner yep, and stuff it, like I that. I unlocked him, so. And what's funny is you can change his color based upon like I think there's different aspects of some you could change. It's based on how long he's in the egg for, I I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My mine's red, so I can't. I found him like I totally forgot about him, and I went and got him like right before he like hatches. So I uh, mm-hmm. I, I got like I think like one of the earliest ones you can get. So. Oh okay okay. I remember back in the day I did have a green one in terms of like. You had like a way specific amount of time, but there's other variations. You have the red one, you have the black one, you have like a green one, you have pink. Yeah. So 
yeah, you can make this Yoshi look just like kind of wacky. He's like, I think he has like five different type of variations. He's got, I think he's even got a yellow one or yeah, something. I forgot, I forgot you can name him. Yes, yeah. you can name Yoshi and stuff like that. I named him different Louis. names. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you know, it's like I'm still rather enjoying Thousand Year Door and stuff. The gameplay itself, it's fine and stuff. Just getting used to the aspect of the whole patch points thing being like upwards to 99 and then remembering that you can collect more of just the same badge in order to stack power points onto Mario or his like his partner and stuff. And that's basically what I've been going for. I mean, I haven't really been investing too much inventory inside Mario's health upon leveling up. I've been more so focusing upon like the flower points and also the bad point badge points. Okay. Because you can tie in some of the badge points with uh with like Mario's health, you know, from like there's certain flowers and stuff that there's certain badges that will help Mario like have like five HP or something like that. I think I have Mario's HP up to like about twenty or like fifteen or something like that. But okay. I've been doing like I've been taking turns, so I, I just yeah. go one by one. So. I know from like some of my runs, like the original Paper Mario, having Mario's flower points and badge points get them high first, and then like invest in HP last is like definitely one of the ways you can go because of how broken those badges were for that game so for thousand year door it's kind of a similar aspect to where you'll literally have you'll literally have badges and stuff that uh will give mario buffs and stuff if he's got like five hp left like a damage dodge or something like that because also could be it going to play but uh yeah there's just a lot of other things i need to do tanker around with and stuff and see if I could jar a bit of memories and stuff from when I used when I did play this game initially. <laughs> hmm. Right. Well, anything, that's all I've been playing though. Anything of you Gables? Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, there were a couple different things. Like I did play I did play like the first initial couple hours of the final shape. I am um let's see. There are inside of this campaign itself, there's like thirty seven like initial missions for this expansion i think i've i'm think i'm on the ninth step right now so i'm like about a quarter of the way through it i did like the second mission because it ties certain like classic elements of destiny 2 inside of it so basically what happens is is like you somehow get into like the traveler and stuff with your character you're following this character crow and stuff which was one of the antagonists of like the original destiny and stuff well one of the neutral like uh, parties and stuff, you know, because you had like uh, like a big bad back from the original Destiny and this and that, but just all this all this stuff from like way back then, and the whole aspect of the final shape is just a culmination of the last ten years of Destiny from like the original game, all the story elements and changes and character betrayals and like allies and stuff all along the way and stuff into the final shape. I love a lot of the grotesque or like enemies and stuff that the witness keeps throwing at you because you'll have these like this. Some of these creatures can be pretty much like uh, bullet sponges. Some of them can be like literally like just this entirely like kind of creepy in aspect. Like you have these tormentors. Like there's this one enemy called the tormentor, right? It's a gigantic enemy. He has a he has a huge sickle and stuff, and that he'll literally swing projectiles at you and stuff. He'll have swinging projectiles and there's some variations of like the witnesses like uh henchmen or something that will literally freeze you like pull you up and freeze you in midair you can actually shoot at them and stuff like that but uh then you'll have like miniature minions and stuff that have like this this whole gravity sort of like ability to where they have this same type of like ability you do right to where they'll like throw this like this like not like, just string but this energy beam or something to you and just grab and pull you and stuff to them and stuff to try to get a couple of shots off. But uh, the reason why I like the second mission like I did is because inside the Traveler, just on your way to getting towards the central portions of this thing and stuff, the entrance portion is just a mix of these different memories and stuff like that from uh, what you have already experienced inside of like the previous Destiny games and also the expansions. Like the EDZ, like that initial thing right before you get to like the tower and stuff in the original Destiny it restructures like just this level right to where it's it's basically feels like a dimension between a dimension like a like a purgatory sort of thing to where everything's all twisted and turned and stuff you'll recognize certain aspects of the edz like the tower and this and that but it's all twisted to an extent to where you can barely recognize it 
but here you are traveling upon certain aspects of like uh, particles, like these big old like chunks, like land mass or something. You gotta you gotta go and like bounce between like platform here and there. There's a lot of like in depth platforming inside the beginning portion missions of uh, Final Shape. But I will say I do love the character interactions, especially between like certain characters and stuff. And I'll go. I'll say a little bit of spoilers here for this and stuff like that. Like the characters, say like with Ikora and also with Cade Six and stuff. Their initial meetup after all this time and stuff, based upon like the events of uh, Forsaken and stuff, and how that character Cade Six was killed and like Forsaken and stuff, and how the Traveler is pretty much like. There's all sorts of like various aspects of the Traveler, like a lot of them don't understand and stuff, but yet Cade Six is like alive and well inside of the final <laughs> shape which is kind of hilarious in and of itself, but it's actually a cool, it's a cool sort of nod because you have Nathan Fillion reprising his role as like Cade Six and stuff. And then it's like a lot of characters come to turns like, yeah, for some odd reason, yeah, you're back for <laughs> because of the total traveler stuff. He doesn't have a ghost or anything and stuff, but he's there giving you advice and stuff. And like he has, still has his hand cannon, his ace of spades and stuff and this and that. But uh, yeah, Tyler, I, I personally have really enjoyed what I've played a final shape so far from looking at certain reviews of it. I mean, a lot of people are still enjoying this, you know, they, and traditionally whenever Bungie is like quartered in certain aspects, like if like financially not doing so hot or something, or there's just, they're just set inside like the back wall or something like that. Somehow they managed to put out quality type of experiences. Like they did it with the original halo, like on consoles and stuff like that way back when, they did it with, like, say, some aspects of Destiny 2 and, like, original Destiny in terms of things that weren't, like, going so well. And then all of a sudden they put out various expansions. Like, they did it a couple times with Destiny 2 already, you know, where it's, which uh, they had, like, uh, Witch Queen. Forsaken. And then they had the Witch Queen and stuff. Yeah. Those expansions were really well received and was stuff. Was Taken King the first game? Yes. Yeah, okay. Taken but... King was the first game. And that, that one was awesome. definitely did. That was awesome. That yeah. improved that game tremendously in terms of kind of the scale and also in terms of what destiny would eventually become for like the next like 10 years. But uh, inside of this expansion too, there's no legendary shards. A lot of those, all those legendary shards were pretty much like it, those are gone now. I mean, there's different aspects of the menus that are different. There are, there are a combination of like different abilities that introduces this new class called the pris like the prismatic class, right? To where you can combine elements of the light like uh, elements and stuff, and then the dark elements and stuff. So it's like you basically can combine certain like elements of say like solar attacks and stuff with say strand attacks and stuff and this and that. You know, I'm not doing a very good job of explaining it, but what I'm just saying is. A melding of light and dark, you have all these different abilities. You can customize your character to make it feel how you want. So, for example, you're tossing, like, say, a uh, kind of like a dark grenade, right? And that kind of freezes this and that. But then you have the ability, melee ability of, like, a strand ability to where you have these, like, these strands sort of, like, swords just slicing through all these other stuff. But uh, there's a lot of customization stuff that's involved. But, uh, yeah, Destiny 2, like, the final shape I've played a bit of. Obviously, I did also hint that I played a little bit more of my Charmander run inside of Pokemon Red. I have beaten the Splish Co. building. I beat uh, Rival Fievel as well as Giovanni. I've beaten Sabrina. I actually beat Sabrina the first time through and stuff, and I almost didn't because her Alakazam literally tanked. It was literally like about a two-hit KO, but I could have been in trouble if uh, her Alakazam used Psychic, but no, it used Psy Wave, which is one of the worst like psychic type attacks in generation one. Like it's, it's even worse than say confusion in some aspects, but uh, the side wave is like one of those teachable TMs and stuff like that in that game. But uh, Charmander's at level 60, right? And so I'm making my way to Fuchsia city. I have to face Koga and then Blaine and then Giovanni again in Viridian city. I'm more than halfway through this playthrough. It's been a little over six hours. There definitely have been some aspects of this game that have been sort of difficult, and that was the initial beginning portion like of uh, the game back before when I got to Brock and stuff. But uh, it actually has been not as bad as I thought it was going to be, and that's because I hadn't been doing any type of minimum battle requirements or anything like that. Like I've been battling all the trainers that 
that I could find and stuff because I know that planning forward, if I'm going to be facing off against the Elite Four and Champion, the first trainer I'm facing off against is Lorelei, which specializes in water ice type Pokemon. So it's like Charmander is going to naturally be weak against stuff like that. So having Charmander maybe up to like about level 70, possibly even level 80 could be a possible, could be something that I need to do in order to try to beat this game. But uh, yeah, man, everything else has been going fine in terms of the games I've been playing. I'm really excited to see, actually, I'm really excited to like try out some other games that uh, I initially did get over the last week as well. So, you know what? I've just been delving a little bit of everything. If I'm in the mood to play something, I'm playing it. But if not, I just generally just fall asleep because of how like how work has been, really. So it's just been, it's just a little bit of here and there and stuff. But I'll definitely have something new to talk about next week in terms of what I've been playing. All right. Well, very cool. Uh, well, yeah. that's gonna wrap it up for us uh, for us this time around. But don't 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 be too sad. You will be back uh, just like a day and a half now. Uh, oh, we'll yeah. be talking about uh, we'll be doing the live react to the Xbox showcase. We'll be back uh, Sunday night. Uh, to do a breakdown of all that, and then we're back on Monday for the Ubisoft uh, live react, and then we're back Monday after sometime Monday night, Monday afternoon, whatever, uh, for mm-hmm. the Ubisoft breakdown. So we have a ton of stuff going on, and also keep track, check us out on the YouTube channel, podcast service, everything like that. But definitely you know, now's a great time to get into the YouTube side of things with all the live reacts, and I will be doing my playthrough of Super Mario Galaxy. So if you want to see how bad I am at, at Mario games, now's the time to find out. You will see live in color <laughs> me trying to play Mario Galaxy. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty exciting. But yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. I was host. I was Tyler. I have been Colonel Gable. So until next time, everyone, please keep yourself all nice and happy. Play some fun games. Watch some fun TV shows. But most importantly of all that, thank you for listening to another fun-filled episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds podcast. Hey, Gables. Yeah. Too sweet? Too sweet, man. Bye, guys. <laughs> See ya.